Hello, this is Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. All right, so I think it's time to really start paying attention to these little black boxes right here. Of course, these are our DC motors for this mechanism. All right, you know, and the funny thing is that quite often blacks, black box methods are used to model such things. Right? And what we're going to do is actually a gray box method, and we're going to get into what that really means, but for the most part it means that we are going to acknowledge kind of a, a physical definition of what that electric circuit is, and then we're going to use principles of physics to essentially um, predict the, um, you know, the, the electric circuit dynamics. All right? And um, I think it's really important that we do model these DC motors, okay, and and it's in the the, the um, idea that we need to assess and optimize the electric power consumption of the, of the system. All right, and I want to just kind of give an example. You know, is that we can, you know, kind of get this robot kind of stuck in a, a certain configuration because maybe there's some static friction that we're trying to work against, right? And if we really are in that static configuration and we are applying torque, it doesn't matter what torque we apply, you know, that the, the mechanical power consumption, torque times velocity, you know, will be equal to zero, okay? But if we are applying torque, that means that there is current flowing through the circuits of the electric motors, and the electric power consumption will be that current times that voltage, okay? And so, you know, we talked about it earlier, but, you know, mechanical and electrical power consumption can be different things and for the most part electric power consumption is more important because that's the one you pay for. So anyways with that being said I think we are highly motivated to model some DC motors and that's what the topic of this video will be. Okay so let's get back to our Simulink model. Right? And so I want to dive into the, the robot, the mechanics and the electronics that make it up. Right? And so on the right side we have the mechanics, on the left side we have the electronics. The connection between the two you know, is really made by these green lines. We'll see one for each of the actuated axes. Right? And so what this really represents is the connection of the electric motors into the mechanical assembly. And I like to even be more specific. I think of this as the mechanical shaft. You know, it's that piece that really lives in both the electrical and the mechanical domains. Right, so let's dive a little bit further into the electronics. And what we're seeing here is a power supply which is providing the electricity through these two electrical lines to these plus and minus terminals of a network of DC motors. All right, because this axis right here called the bicep uh, carries the largest mechanical loads, you'll see that it uses two motors where all the other axes just use one. In our network of electric motors, we'll see that there are the six motors to actuate those five axes. And we'll see in the case of the bicep that the shafts of these two motors converge to essentially drive that, that bicep motion. Right? I think it's interesting you know, that, that these components of motors, their interfaces are really beginning to resemble the interfaces of real motors, that there are electrical connections there are mechanical connections, and then there are signals that essentially, you know, command torque or position and that sort of thing. Okay, so as we dive even deeper into this block, all right, we'll see what I call the controls view, all right, and what we have here is a current loop, all right, and what it means is that we're controlling the current with a PI controller to adjust voltages until we kind of get the current that's being implied by our torque command. Now if we dive in one more level deeper, this is where we start to get to the hardware. All right? And so these, you know, I'll call them the direct models of hardware. Right? And that's things like the DC machine and the voltage bridge, you know, essentially the H bridges. And it's through these H bridges that we modulate our connection to our DC source to deliver, vo deliver voltages to our, D, to our uh, DC motor right there. Right? And we use a scheme called pulse width modulation where this average voltage that's being commanded ultimately gets implemented to deliver what we need with regard to voltage to the DC machine. Okay, so now these blocks, both the bridge and the machine, are directly you know, taken from the, uh, the library of Simulink through this, this library called Simscape, which models mechanical, electrical, and fluid domains. Okay, very useful library. All right. So what I want to do is I want to right mouse click on this block, and I want to look under the mask. 
All right, and so we got access to really the way this model has been composed. Now this is an interesting model, you know, in my opinion, in the way it kind of mixes, you know, physical descriptions of things like resistors and inductors with numerical signals. All right, and here's the important part. You know, and it's that there are these blocks like this. All right, so this is something that gets inserted into the electric circuit model. We'll see a plus terminal and a minus terminal, but what we're seeing is a measurement of current that's coming out of it. All right, so essentially an ideal current measurement. Okay, and of course there are voltage measurements and so forth. And then this block right here, which is a source block. All right, so again, inserted into the electric circuit, and essentially it's going to apply the voltage that we deliver through a numerical signal. All right, and so the real key piece to this is that you, it, it, it kind of, you know, through signals, getting into that signal world, it gives you full access to the mathematical capabilities of MATLAB and Simulink. And that's quite a powerful thing, all right? And so these blocks, they are modifiable. You know, I can kind of, you know, like I don't like that this is overlapping that block. Not sure how that happened. Notice so I try to move it, it says, hey, you can't do that. But what it enables you to do is to choose to disable the connection from the library, and then you can kind of move things the way you want. All right, now that's kind of a simple thing, but certainly we could replace any component with whatever we want, and we can, you know, do all kinds of creative things. Okay, so I'd like to finish up by emphasizing how important rich mathematical capability can be. All right, so here's kind of a simple model. It's a DC motor. We apply a voltage, and we're able to measure current and speed. Okay, now if we look underneath this, we see that essentially a solution to a second-order differential equation. We see an integrator right there, and we see an integrator right there. All right, and the basic idea, you know, is that you open up these models, all right, and yeah, you might take like a step source and throw together a couple of blocks to represent the differential equation. All right, and you hook these up. Okay, and let's put a scope in there. All right, and you hit run, and very quickly you have solved, in this case, first order differential equation we throw another integration block on it like that, you know, very rapidly we're solving a second order differential equation. Okay, so anyways, with regard to my DC motor, okay, um, that we may choose to do this. Now, and, uh, and why do I really get at this, you know, it's really emphasizing that same point, that it's the, um, I'll call it the customization ability is kind of the critical piece to this, right? And the ability to elaborate to the specifics of what you need to do, all right? In our case, you know, we may not want to have a self-contained model. We may want a model that really interfaces properly to what we need it to do, all right? And so I'm going to paste that in, right? And that this is going to be velocity coming from our mechanical model for the basis of the back EMF voltage calculation. All right, and let's come here. All right, and that will be my torque. All right, and I'll do one more thing. I'll edit this mask, and I'll get rid of our image on the block. All right, and so now I'm able to really see those interfaces. All right. And so what I have here is what I can now connect to my SIM mechanics model. So we'll copy the block and go to the mechanical model, fresh from export from the CAD assembly. And we'll paste it right here. And so that bicep motor now is receiving its torque from the DC motor model. All right. And we'll get velocity by tapping into this bus right here and we will choose motion okay and I happen to know our motion is composed of position velocity and acceleration so I'll get the second component and basically with that we've now set up voltages and input that will drive the motion of the of the bicep and I will end by discussing the thing that we actually haven't discussed at all yet right and that there are parameters that define all these models and that these parameters really reflect the individual components the hardware that we're really going to be working with right and in this example 
you know, for a DC motor, resistance, inductance, torque constants are pretty critical parameters. And as you can see, I have not yet put a lot of thought into it as each are equal to one. Okay, so in our next video, we're going to do a little bit of testing, right? And so we're going to use this little Arduino board, which we're using to essentially deliver through pulse width modulation the voltages to the motor. And then we're going to make some measurements on the angle of this, all right? And um, what we're going to do is identify that resistance, that inductance, and the, the torque constant, maybe a little bit more information like friction and damping in this motor, all right? And um, I think this will complete what I, I call the three pillars of, of modeling, okay? And that we saw two of them in this demonstration. You know, that one is to model based on a physical description, which we saw with the electric circuits. We saw it with the mechanics in the previous video. Um, the second pillar I'd call you know, direct modeling of the, the mathematical equations or direct solution of the mathematical equations. And then this third one is what I call empirical modeling. Right? And so I think we're going to do it in kind of a clever way because we're going to take our, our models that are based on physics, for example, our DC motor, and we're going to tune it to the data so that we can identify the appropriate values for resistance, inductance, and so forth. So thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, please give us that thumbs up. Um, it's very helpful, but you know, it's just really, it's very nice to get that too. So um, anyways, the idea is let's have a really great conversation. We'd love to hear from you. You can contact us through like Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube comments. Um, we hope to hear from you. Thank you. Bye.